Yo, powerful nonsenses. What's up? It is we. It, it is, is us. This is us. It is this, these two people. <laughs> Wayne and Jim. Yes. From Powerful Nonsense, which obviously makes sense because you're tuning in. Tuning into Powerful Nonsense. Visually or audibly. It'd be really weird if it was like Wayne and Jem from Not Powerful Nonsense. Yeah, I don't think there's probably too many Wayne and Jem connections in the world, to be honest. The Wayne and Jem connection, I like it. You don't want to get involved in that. <laughs> <laughs> so welcome to episode 121. Thanks for joining us. Yes, indeed. We've, it's, it's been a while since we've actually done a batch of recordings and episodes. It scares me. Every single time we like go away for a while, I'm like... Will we remember how to podcast? What should we talk about? <laughs> well, it's, it's been, it was quite an eventful month. It's been a very eventful month for me. We were at especially. the... Well, especially And you. it's still going on. And <laughs> it will settle down soon and we will... You're like, oh, I'm so busy with all my holidays. Oh my God, travelling around is so difficult. <laughs> <laughs> and here's me, like, in London, like, yeah. Well, Enjoy that. We know Wayne's had a busy time as well, but we won't go there. Oh, you... I Just, oh. just saying... Just let's saying. not let's not go there. Is your sure. mattress all right? Or? Oh my god! I actually can't believe that you're bringing this up <laughs> on an episode. We'll, mo- let's, we'll, we'll let's move on. Move on let's quickly. move on quickly. Uh, we've been busy. I hate you. In so different much. ways. Oh, no, <laughs> <laughs> we did. We finally did the new media Europe. Yes. Which was about a month ago. By the time this episode goes out. Yeah. Um, it was good fun. But I was, I was nervous so as hell. So good. But it was good fun. So so good. We hosted the podcasting awards, which we did not win anything. But it was no. still good fun no. to get involved. To be it. honest, I think I enjoyed it more the fact we didn't win anything. Yeah, me as much too. as it would have been great yeah. to have won something. <laughs> but like we just kind of we were chilled, we were relaxed. I think next year we need to like tell our audience more to like nominate us, vote for yeah, us, yeah, all that stuff. Yeah, and next year it's likely to be Krakow. Yeah, Poland. Poland yeah, which would be really cool. Um, Lots of vodka if, in we, the house. if we get invited. Hopefully. But um, yeah, no, it was really, really fun. We got to meet Dan Miller. That was crazy. We were, we were sat on the same table as Dan Miller eating dinner. <laughs> that was a highlight. That was pretty cool. And for those of you who don't know Dan Miller, he's like literally one of the best, biggest podcasters yeah, out there. Yeah. So He's always like really high in the charts. And Wayne was just like having a casual conversation over a meal and I was just like, we just we just fit in here, Wayne. We yeah. fit in here. We were just too <laughs> cool for school. <laughs> Um, yeah, so we hosted the podcast, had a wonderful night talking to, uh, uh, catching up with Max Pepe from Rebel Head Entrepreneurs, mm-hmm. uh, of course, Mike and Isabel Russell. Who Lots of podcasts. Right. There, it was really. just a brilliant, brilliant event. Um, actually, the podcast awards, if you do want to check it out, is on YouTube. You can watch the whole thing. I'm a little bit embarrassed to watch it back. Uh, I was rather intoxicated. <laughs> I think we both were. Yeah, we were, to be honest. Um, to those that were at the event, podcast. <laughs> um yeah and and we also we also held a i think should if we do the podcast awards next year yeah i think we should make it an annual event the gary v banana off yes which is also on youtube which is also which on i YouTube. did get involved in <laughs> with the girthiest banana around but <laughs> <laughs> so yeah so that's that is a, as part of the whole stream for the podcast awards mm-hmm. but also um, it has got its own video as well, if you we'll do just want to it. check that up. Uh, yeah, so that was really, really fun. And it we was. got to meet one of our listeners, Adam. Yeah, that was crazy as well. We finally actually met somebody who is a avid listener mm-hmm. of our podcast. So, mm-hmm. so yeah, yeah so that was really cool. Cheers, we just Adam. hung out with him. Yeah, it was really cool, really cool. <laughs> Thanks so, for our lunch as well. Yeah, that was very a really kind nice of surprise. Him. Very kind of him. So, yeah, so if you didn't make it, you did miss out. Mm-hmm. Um, but crack off Poland next year. Let's do it. I'm hoping... Hoping we'll be invited along to that. Maybe. If not, we might just go anyway. Yeah, <laughs> we'll just crash it anyway. <laughs> so. So, to the episode. To the to episode. what's going down today. So, we're going to talk about honing your hunger Ooh. for success. Hunger. I'm actually feeling quite hungry as well. But <laughs> Me too. We'll, we'll focus time. on the success for now and then we'll and come then back we'll to the food. And then we'll deal with food later. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> but you know what? Actually, like this, I think this is a, a genuine, genuine problem I think for a lot of people in that, like you can have your dream, you can have, you can know what you want to get to, but sometimes the drudgery of the actual, not so much the work of what you want to do, but the work you have to do to get to the stuff that you want to do Mm -hmm. can really be like demotivating as hell. Yeah. I just think people don't realize how much like energy and so many different aspects to kind of get yourself in that mind frame where you're chasing something consistently Mm -hmm. And I think there's so many different habits and ways of being that you kind of have to 
they have to become totally normal for you to do mm-hmm. before you can ever get there. And I think a lot of people, yeah, I guess this episode is really important to show people what you're going to need to do yeah. if you want to finally get to that place, whether it is starting your own business, whether it is being a freelance, whatever you're going mm-hmm. into, acting, mm-hmm. any creative endeavours, what kind of habits you're going to need to take on consistently to make that happen. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So you, um, let's start by talking about the dip. Ooh. You, which is a big Seth Godin it sort is a of big metaphor. Seth. Yes. Which and you've also written well. a blog post about the dip as did well. Did I? You did. I always forget about all the blogs I write. Yeah. Expect the dip. Expect the dip. We'll link up to it in the show notes, powerfulnonsense.com forward slash one two one. Um but yeah, you wrote a blog post about the dip. So do you want to just explain what the dip is? Yeah, I think it, the, the dip is an important thing, but I think we've already spoke about on another episode about actually getting started. I think there's mm-hmm. a, a lot of the problems that most people have as entrepreneurs is actually getting started on your project yeah, yeah. but then the biggest actual actual like problem there is is the dip that's the part where most people end up stopping mm-hmm. and that usually means you're excited you get started and then say maybe two three months down the line all that energy all that enthusiasm to start has disappeared because now you're not getting results and so everybody naturally whatever you do whether it's sport whether it's training in the gym you'll get to a point where you're not seeing any more improvements nothing's happening maybe you're not earning money maybe you're not making the connections you hope or maybe you're not earning the revenues you were expecting and then suddenly you go for this massive dip and that feels like the world's ending and then you're like you know what i've had enough this ain't working whereas seth godin in his book the dip which i probably stole the blog post from mm-hmm. he basically says that you need to expect that dip and then you need to know when it comes and see that as an opportunity because a lot a lot of the time once you kind of work through that dip on the other side mm-hmm. is a new opportunity and right. i think entrepreneurship is all about expecting the dip going through it and coming out the other end right maybe with a new i don't know new opportunity or a new way of thinking uh-huh so you mentioned using the that seth godin says using the dip as an opportunity mm-hmm. could you elaborate on that because how do you how do you take the slump the dip which is the bit where you're going oh i don't know if this is working for me anymore yeah. how do you turn that into an opportunity I think the main thing with a dip is it's probably something that you haven't like expected, you haven't planned in. Right. Which usually means that no one could do like every bit of like research to know this is exactly how to start a business. Right. Everything goes perfect. I think yeah, usually yeah. the dips come from the things that you cannot plan for. Right. And so the dip, you kind of need to expect that you're there's going to be so many different aspects that you didn't plan for. Right. And so eventually when they crop up, it's an opportunity to learn and say, oh, I didn't actually think about that. Right. Okay. And then because you've got that dip, it will kind of then say, oh, I realize I'm not getting the customers I wanted because I'm not doing the marketing. I'm not on social uh-huh. media. Right. And so the dip is no customers. What have I not done? Where's the opportunity? Right. <clears throat> so the dip is the negative momentum. Yeah. Where you start going, oh, shit, this is harder than I thought it was going to be. Yeah. Um, and so you turn that into an upswing by going, okay, well, where did I go wrong? Yeah. What, what can I what change? What has the dip highlighted? What has the dip highlighted right. in what I'm not doing? Okay. And so you obviously think you thought something was going to happen. It didn't. Okay. And then you question, where did this dip come from? And usually the dip is that thing that will highlight what you, what you need to start working on now. Right. Okay. So in the context of this then. Yeah in the honing your hunger to succeed. Oh, yes. Um, the, the dip is, I would imagine, from my perspective, the perspective I'm familiar with, the dip comes in this moment where you kind of go, man, this is so much harder than I thought. Yeah. And and you kind of go, this is taking a lot more effort, a lot more energy yeah, yeah, yeah. than I needed. Yeah. So what do you do then to counteract that type of dip? Um, I think like you speak to a lot of entrepreneurs who start off and I think they actually like say the best thing about starting was my naivety mm-hmm. because I think if you knew everything you'd probably think fuck this it's just too stressful too much is uh. going on and I think the main thing especially especially for like honing your success and your ability to move towards the thing you want to do I think you need to become super resilient right. like I think you need to understand that if anything you kind of want to hope that these dips come because a dip every single time a dip comes it means that you're going to go to that sort of next level which we've obviously right. done podcasts as well but it shows you that something didn't happen it's not going the way you wanted let's tweak right. something and then you do a massive like we we refreshed our website which means that now we've got to have another slump no not enough people come to our website right we've refreshed it you've done some tweaks more people come we mm-hmm. got out of the dip we right. could have got stuck in the dip and say no one's going to our website this is a failure forget it it's not going to work mm-hmm. so yeah i think it is expecting that things yeah. aren't going to be perfect 
And I think the most successful entrepreneurs kind of just weather that storm and they just keep going mm -hmm. and they don't see it as like, I don't know, they don't get either hurt by it. They don't stop. They don't lose motivation. Mm -hmm. They just say, oh, great. Something's not working. This is a great opportunity to learn. What right. tweaks will I make? And then they carry on moving forward. Really. Right. Okay. But obviously, like when you're, when you're dealing with like the dips, right? Mm -hmm. um, I mean, one of the things that, that we've noted down that's really important, which we talk about so much now. I think we talk about this like so much more now than we did when we first started the podcast. It's all about like energy management. Mm -hmm. And because when the dips come, it can be really, really easy just to go, oh, screw this. Mm -hmm. I'm done. But if you've got the, the energy to kind of bounce back from it, that's when the real good stuff happens, mm -hmm. which is kind of like what you're saying, the opportunities yeah, yeah. there. So um, I guess in many ways, one of the best things that you can do is just, as, as I said, like, really just get tap into that energy management so mm -hmm. that in anticipation of that dip mm -hmm. you've already got that system in place to go okay how can i like re-energize myself mm -hmm. just to get back and, and kind of again use that as the opportunity right yeah no totally and i think the 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 important thing there with that managing the energy that could be we speak a lot about health managing how you're eating mm -hmm. but i think for some people it's just being around certain people and we have a dip in what we're doing we're not feeling motivated about the podcast mm -hmm. we have to sit down and re-energize each other and right. just speak about like why did we start this in the first mm -hmm. place who are the people we're connecting with even if it's not as many as we hoped we are connecting with some people and i think right. those are sort of the habits you need to kind of bring into what you're doing mm -hmm. to kind of give it that energy because that as i say you do everybody's naturally as humans you have these peaks and troughs yeah, yeah. of energy management you might not you might we have so many more things going on than just the podcast of course yeah and so it is kind of figuring out like when i'm having that dip when i am feeling low in energy who are the people i've got to surround myself with mm -hmm. what are the things i've got to read do i need to go back to the reviews where people are saying stuff's great that's a, mm -hmm. a a big uh boost of energy to keep you going so mm -hmm. i do think you just have to have certain habits and things that you do that uh -huh. kind of keep you motivated really so are we saying as well in terms of the managing of the energy and the dip right are we saying that it is an opportunity to take the take your foot off the gas for a moment and just check out to recharge? Are we saying that? In some or, ways, sometimes you need that. But yeah. then, because I do find when I'm on holiday, I'm like, and I'm sitting on the beach, I'm coming up with all kinds of ideas right. for the podcast, where I want to go next, yeah. what book I want to write next, yeah. what blog post I want to write next, who I think we should get in contact with. So sometimes mm -hmm. it's good in that way. But then I think you want to get to a place where you are maybe daily or weekly know that you're making consistent growth in whatever you're doing. You are yeah. moving forward. So I would say you don't want to get to the point where every other month you feel, forget this, it's rubbish, you go away. And then sometimes you <laughs> right. don't even get that. Maybe there's a lot of people that are doing stuff that they actually don't really want to do. They go on holiday and they realise, I feel such relief from for what, not doing for not doing the thing I want to do. And that's yeah. like a that's your body saying, you know what, you don't want to do this, uh -huh. get out. But if you go away and suddenly you've got that time to be great, like grateful for what you're doing and really mm -hmm. privileged about what you're doing. And suddenly you're like, all these ideas come. I think that's sometimes a little warning, not a warning sign, like a nice message to say, right. you know what, you enjoy this, but you're getting bogged down with stuff you don't enjoy in right. what you're doing. And I, and I think that kind of pertains to like overwhelm. Mm -hmm. And I think when you're, when you're looking at what it is that you want to do, you've started off with good intentions and then the the kind of goal becomes bigger 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 more big hairy lofty goal kind mm -hmm. of stuff and in the end you kind of end up going well it, the gap between where you are and where you want to get to has become mm -hmm. so big mm -hmm. that often it's really difficult to see see the path mm -hmm. and so i think one of the best things for managing like the dip and and that kind of that wall if you will <laughs> is just kind of i mean i've had to do this so many times and you, you just kind of have to go, well, that's where I want to be, but I'm still miles away from that. So, yeah. like, what's the next thing to do? Uh -huh. And just, fo like, my biggest successes have always come where I've not been, I'm not given a shit about the big picture. And I've just mm -hmm. gone, right, what do I need to focus my energy on for the next step? And, like, what is, mm -hmm. what is the key thing that I need to achieve next to get me on that path? Yeah, and I think you hear a lot of people who say like your the big picture is that north star. You know, you're mm -hmm. you're ending up. You you know where you want to go. We know what this being perfect for us doing the podcast would right. look like. We know where it wants to be, mm -hmm. but we don't get bogged down and saying tomorrow. Let me think about what I want. Oh, we're so far away from it. Like yeah. you say, it is being quite comfortable knowing the next step mm -hmm. and understand that every next step is going to come with its probably its own dip. Where yeah. you know what that's a new challenge. Haven't done this before. Haven't spoke to that kind of level of person before. Mm -hmm. Haven't 
I don't know, not finding energy to do podcasts, whatever, or blog posts, whatever you want. So it's kind of, I think you just got, with any kind of like entrepreneur, you have to understand that you're literally just every day hammering through doors, get, taking on new challenges. Mm-hmm. And that's the fun of it. Like, I, I love that I don't that think that, that's even specifically to like entrepreneurs though. I think yeah. it's, it's, it's all aspects of life. I was Anybody to, who's growing, I think. Yeah, yeah, well, I was talking to my best mate the other day and he was like, um, oh, you know, I've, he's working a, a, a day job mm. and he's working long hours mm. and it's just like he's kind of hit this wall where he's going oh, I am just exhausted I went to get my hair cut the other day and the guy cutting my hair said that I looked knackered oh, I've never God. met the guy before if a hairdresser like, says that as well right. then there's a problem because right. they usually say like love like nice stuff to you make you feel great right so. exactly but <laughs> one of the key things that he stopped doing I mean I'm going to be a right hypocrite now but one of the key things that he isn't doing anymore that he used to do was mm. he used to work out every single day mm. and and I said to him, I said that you'll probably find the thing that's making you feel really knackered mm. is you're putting all of your energy into the wrong thing. Mm. Whereas if you put a little bit of energy into working out every day again, you're probably going to f- feel more energized in a different way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's just the little things like that that I think people, it's so, again, I'm going to be a right hypocrite. It's so easy just to go, oh, well, I haven't got time to do that stuff. Yeah. But if you, again, it comes down to managing your energy because when the dip comes, at least you can go, well, if I work out, is going to give me a pick me up, and it at least I'll at least be able to ride the dip rather mm-hmm. than just kind of. I just think wallow in it. Entrepreneurs or people who are growing, like really pushing themselves on a daily basis, you need to be buzzing for life. Mm-hmm. You need to be energetic. You need to be feeling good. You need to be around great people because right. you're doing stuff that's totally out of the norm of everybody else. Like it's easy just to go home and sit on the couch and do nothing. That is easy, mm-hmm. easy, easy. But if you're trying to create something, make something happen out of nothing then you just do need that next level of energy where people are just like, this guy just doesn't stop. Why can he just do all of this stuff and you're getting so right. much done? It's just, yeah, if you are going to try to hone your, what's the episode called, the title? <laughs> hone your... Hone your hunger ho- to succeed. If you want to hone that your... That might not be the title, but that's yeah, what we're going with. That's the working title. It doesn't roll off the tongue. <laughs> <laughs> you but, came up with it. Did I? Yeah. Oh, God, that was probably like months ago. <laughs> but no, if you are trying to like hone your something, what is it? <laughs> Honing Honing your your, hunger to succeed. If you want to hone your hunger to succeed, I do think, like, number one is you need to be an energetic, happy, like, good person who who knows how to get around the right people who know who is exercising. I do Uh think if you're not holistically looking after yourself, you cannot be an entrepreneur. Like, you're just going to, in some aspect of your life, it's going to fall apart. Mm -hmm. The relationship, if you don't have the relationship, that's going to fall apart. Mm -hmm. It needs to be a whole holistic way of being yeah ultimately i agree right we're really going long for the first half of this episode we got so much more to cover so let's just take a quick break regroup i'll find out what the title is again and then we'll (laughs) be back in the second half okay (laughs) we're back in a mo so we thought we'd just take a few seconds just to say thank you to our sponsor the university of northampton huge thank you to them for supporting the show um so why should you check them out well first of all we're we alumni. There. We yes. went there. So everything that we kind of deliver to you kind of comes from them in a way. Um, but also, they're not just about getting a degree. The thing we love about Northampton Uni from experience is the fact that you come out of your course with your degree, but also there's so many options on the table. They understand that it's not just about going out and getting a job anymore. It's also about the possibility of setting up your own business and becoming an entrepreneur. And to top that off, <laughs> It's not just about setting up a business, it's about setting up a social enterprise. That's their specialist area. So if you're thinking of setting up a business, it can also be one that's doing good to the world and delivering social impact. So check them out, northampton.ac.uk. And huge thank you to them for supporting the show. Welcome back. Hello, you are currently listening to the episode Honing Your Hunger to Succeed. Or to success. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I got it wrong, didn't I? Yeah, I, I, I very nearly corrected you, but I thought, no, I'm going to... just. I mean, it was close enough. That'd be. So we're back, Wayne. Where are we going next? So we've talked quite a lot about like energy management and the dip itself and things like that. Um, so I just kind of want the second half of this episode just to kind of be about like tactics, tactical mm. thinking on how to deal with the dip if and when it comes or even just general generally motivating yourself yeah um one thing that i really wanted to talk about um is do you think right positive reinforcement or negative reinforcement is more important is this the kind of the like so the carrot or the carrot stick, or the stick. Yeah, exactly yeah, yeah. carrot or the stick yeah which do you which which have you personally found more effective 
I always find the stick, to be honest. Mm -hmm. But then I think the carrot is kind of more, I think that's when you're going for more of abundant mentality, whereas the stick is usually when you're in that scarcity Uh mentality. You're like, what what do you stand to lose? Or Uh like you're fueled by something that annoys you, which I think is really good at some point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I've wrote a lot of blog posts on this as well, Mm -hmm. um, just about like when you, like you hate your job enough and you really hate the people you work for, that is such a kick. Like I didn't enjoy my boss back at a, a job I used to do. And I used to love that as energy. I used to literally like feed off that. Like, I can't wait to show you what I can do when I get out of here uh-huh. and you're going to be stuck in this office. And uh-huh. that's, that is quite a good energy for some, sometimes when you're out and you're doing your own thing, you're like, that's not serving me. But I think for a lot of people, I think sometimes being annoyed about where you currently are or getting angry mm-hmm. about it and just be mm-hmm. like, do you know what? There's got to be a better life out there for me. Yeah. So I do think... Different people, different strokes for different yeah. folks. But I'm personally a kind of stick guy, guy as well. Yeah. Like, give me a deadline yeah. and it will be done because I don't want the fallout from missing the deadline. Yeah. But if you say, like, oh, I'll get it done when you're ready, it will never get done because I'm like, well, what's in it for me? Like, the in it for me is almost like the avoiding the shit storm which comes from missing the deadline. Mm. And also, the other thing, I'm super competitive. Yeah, me too. So you give me you give me a rival, and I'm like, right. <laughs> you let someone beat me. Like if someone beats me, then uh, anything like a sport or something, like uh-huh. I'm going away. I'm going to do my research. I'm going to train. <laughs> I'm going to hire someone to help me with that thing. And that is sometimes is that's what sometimes uh-huh. people need. Like you need a bit of like, I don't know. Maybe it's more I don't know, mm-hmm. masculine thing is like massive egos, and you're just like, you know what? I'm not having that. Uh-huh. I'm going to get better in some way, whatever else happens. And we, uh-huh. I was actually talking to my friend about this the other day and he was saying like about ego. Is it good to have some ego? And I was like, well, I know when we play tennis or badminton or wherever we play, like we just... <laughs> You're a shit when we're playing tennis. We just like wind each other up so much that we like try even harder. Like, you know, next week's my week. <laughs> <laughs> or you know when we play yeah. as well. It's like I feed off that. So it's, I think it is knowing uh-huh. what motivates you. Is it there? Sometimes it's a bit of both. It's really though. funny, like when we are playing tennis, actually, it's really funny watching you step up your game when I actually come out of nowhere with a really oh, good rally and you're like, oh, I'm like, what's happened here? That's and then it. you just like ace I'm it. Like, I'm like, switch up 50, <laughs> bam. And I'm like, yeah. oh, I had no chance. Yeah. No, but I think it is good to know um, initially what, what you need. Sometimes mm-hmm. it is people who are like, you know what, if I get paid that much money, I'm getting it done. And that means you're looking at the carrot. Right. But then, yeah, I guess it's, I don't know. It's probably you could be really mindful of it and say, do you know what? You probably don't need both. You just go, you just know what you like doing and right. you sit in the middle and you, uh-huh. you don't look at the carrot, you don't look at the stick, you just say, this is me being me. But I'm young. But I suppose if, it's, if, it's and... if you're doing something that you're enjoying, I suppose that is the carrot rather than the stick, right? Because okay. you're doing it for the enjoyment of it. So the reward is the work yeah. itself. Yeah, I guess the carrot, like you say, maybe it's that North Star. You see uh-huh. the vision of where you want to uh-huh. be. Rather than saying, you know what, if this falls through, because I do think that's worrying as well, because if you get so worried about like, oh, if this doesn't work enough, go back to the office, right. that's a stick. And then right. that's quite scary. That puts you in a kind of like, oh, shit, this has to work. And that puts you in a panic mentality, uh-huh. rather than the vision of where you want to go is more uh, inspiring, right. rather than thinking, crap, I'm going to go there if I back to that thing mm-hmm. I hate. So mm-hmm. I don't know, it's interesting. But yeah, um, I think the, the carrot thing is is interesting. I. Yeah. Uh, I want to touch on gamification a little bit because I know yes. you put this in the notes. I've you actually put been... this in the notes, didn't you? Did no, I? you put it in the notes. Oh, go on then. I was going to put it in the notes, but you, well, you beat me you to it. you should probably talk about it. Um, gamification is really, really interesting. It's something that I really do kind of like exper- try to experiment with. But I think because I'm more carrot than stick, <laughs> I think my investment in it is almost half-arsed in a way because I'm kind of like, oh, that'd be really interesting. Yeah. Um, like the thing on the Apple Watch with the fitness thing is a really good example of gamification with the three rings mm-hmm. um, where like you have to hit your goal for calories burnt in a day. Mm-hmm. And if after a week you've not hit that seven days in a row, it will reduce your target number, which well, is a know. real kick in the teeth because you're like, oh my God. I know you always I say that to like me and you same, always yeah. mention that you're like, I haven't hit my ring for the last five days in a row. And now they're going down and you're like, no, got to get it back up Well, again. yesterday <laughs> I was I was at home all day yeah. uh, working from home, so I didn't actually do much exercise. Yeah. And at like three o'clock, my watch was like, um, you've burnt like 10 <laughs> calories today. I was Morning, like, oh, you'll shit. turn into a fat kid. So I just, I just <laughs> got up and went for a 20, 25 minute walk, yeah. which I wouldn't have done if it yeah. wasn't for the gamification of it. So it does kind of work. But there's also a really interesting book um, if for all the geeks out there, which is called Level Up Your Life. Oh, from yeah. uh, Nerd Fitness guy, mm-hmm. which I'm kind of, 
I started reading and then when stopped not, reading it. You're not a big fan of reading. I'm readings. not a big reader. Um, but it's a really interesting concept where basically he just takes all of your goals in life and just completely gamifies them as if it, as if like life is a video game. It's a mm-hmm. really interesting concept. Maybe you need to gamify your reading. Maybe. There you go. Maybe. Kindle should build it in actually. I think it's it's I think if you can if software can build gamification into it, yeah. I think like in terms of productivity and things like that, I think people get so much. It's more human done. psychology though, isn't it? Like yeah. everybody likes to see right. the total going up somehow uh-huh. or whatever it is. <laughs> well yesterday when I went for my walk, I got a little badge on my watch which was like, Yay, you just set a new walking target. Uh, okay. And I was like, Oh, sweet. Yeah. And then I was like spinning the badge on my watch like, oh, that's pretty. How would you say then people <laughs> could like apply that if they don't have like the technology and stuff in terms of just pursuing like the next level or the next steps that they need to make? How do you gamify like tasks? Um, okay, so one of the general concepts between behind like nerd fitness uh, is basically you get, once you... I mean, it's, it's based off video game concept, right? Mm-hmm. And like role-playing games and yeah, yeah. like World of Warcraft and stuff yeah. like that. So the reason people get so addicted to things like World of Warcraft is like you do a repetitive task enough times, you'll get enough experience points, mm-hmm. which means you'll level up, which means you might get new powers, you might get new gear, you might get more gold mm-hmm. to go buy new stuff. And so, so it's you about... you that to your life as well. Basically, basically, <laughs> yeah. So, so basically the way he works it, um, again, I've not finished the book, so I'm only like part way through. But mm-hmm. basically, he gives each task an experience point number, which then goes right. into a pool, and then you level up. And then when you level up, you give yourself a certain amount of rewards. Ah, okay. Um, so that could be a, mm-hmm. one something I do really want to like deep dive experiment with once I've finished the book. But um, yeah, it's this idea that like, so if you let's say for example, you want to do strength training. Yeah. So you, it might just your first task might just be right do uh, do fifty push ups for ten days straight mm-hmm. each day, and then once you've completed that, you go right okay. Now that I've completed that, I'm gonna up the up the target mm-hmm. to maybe like a hundred push ups, and then once you complete that, it's like right now that I've done the push ups, I can my reward is I can go and spend some money on some weights. Mm-hmm. So it ups oh, the skill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you're kind of treating yourself at the same time. It's literally like a game, like, oh, yeah, you've now levelled up to weights. Right, exactly. <laughs> but you're not, you're not like, going back on yourself and being like, oh, I've done all this working out now. Yeah. Now you can go have McDonald's. Yeah. Like, it's not that. It's about, it's about upskilling. I kind of must do that naturally because whenever I do, like, two, three hours work, I'm like, all right, who wants to go out for some lunch? Or after three hours of working, then I'm going to go do something. I'm right. going to go for a walk or I'm going to play tennis mm-hmm. or I'm going to go... I don't know. Well, maybe maybe you are a bit more carrot than stick I, then. Maybe maybe everybody. I think everybody probably oh, yeah, has a level have of it. Of it yeah. But I guess it's being more deliberate in how you gamify. Uh-huh. So, but then people might be like, "Well, why do you have to gamify if you enjoy doing this and it's something you should be doing? Shouldn't it just come naturally? You don't have to kind of tease yourself to go it's, and do it's, it." I think it's more for the the bit the aspects of that that are mm. not so fun. Like I hate line learning. I mm. hate it. It's one of my least favorite parts of the acting job. Yeah. But I gotta do it. Yeah, yeah, and I really have to kind of like push myself to do it. So it's for the bits with the aspects that you don't like. My God, this episode is like flying right. by. Let's, let's right. move on to something else. Jem, uh, yes, I'm going to hand over to you to Thank touch you. on a few things that you kind of really want to touch on. Do I? Because maybe I do. Let's do it. <laughs> you just fire a question. Because I'm just. Me. Well, no, I'm just. I'm more going to be like, what have we missed that you wanted to talk about? Um, because I got stuck on gamification for quite a while. Yes. I think the main point of this is I, I think the biggest thing that people need to take away from this episode is see the challenges as opportunities. I think mm-hmm. number one, like if you are somebody who wants to grow in whatever you're doing, like you need to seek out the opportunities to test yourself. Like if you're just comfortable doing the same thing week in, week out, it's boring. You're not changing. Right. You're not growing. You're not doing right. anything new. I'm always looking for ways that I can just keep pushing myself in different aspects like whether it is sports, try different sports, see how you perform in that, I don't know, start something new, just see how it goes. Two months, oh, it didn't work, never mind, you've learned something from it. I just think if you are someone who is yeah, pushing yourself out of the norm, you have to be someone who regularly just puts yourself in an uncomfortable situation just to learn something from it. Mm-hmm. Or you go to a course and you realise, oh my God, I know nothing about this, I thought I knew everything. And I think you've got to look for the opportunities to challenge yourself. And yeah, I think it is that kind of like, yeah, just keep pushing yourself, just... I think that's what people need to do, really. Get comfortable with being uncomfortable all the time. Because if you are comfortable yeah. constantly, it means nothing's changing. Nothing's getting, nothing's improving. You mm-hmm. are 
you want to experience as much as possible, you want to learn as much as possible, you want to test how much you can take. Mm-hmm. And I think that's that's part of the fun of living, really. Yeah, definitely. There's a note here as well, which mm. I just want you to clarify on, because I'm yes. not quite sure what you mean with this. Yeah, I never know what But I mean. the get around where it gets better is a little phrase you've thrown <laughs> in the notes. <laughs> Sounds very quotable. Which does sound very quotable. Yeah. So we're going to say it again. Go get on. around where it gets better. Yes. And that's ultimately... What do you mean Most people... Even me, wherever you're at, you're you're at a certain level and you're comfortable with that. But there are people that you're looking at thinking, you know what, I wouldn't mind living a bit like how they live and having a bit mm-hmm. of what they've got. And I think most of us probably know where we want to be or like you have that North Star, that vision. But there's someone comfortably doing that. And it mm-hmm. kind of goes back to that. You are the people you surround yourself with. Uh-huh. It is kind of get around people who are doing the things you want to do, who are living that better way of living. And the more you can do that, the more it becomes part of your natural way of thinking. Mm-hmm. Goes back to like, I can use examples of when I used to charge certain amounts of my services. Right. It's kind of like, well, when I'm around people who like, even yesterday, I think I asked for a quote from someone and they sent it back and it was a ridiculous price. I was like, no way does anybody ever tell this guy like, yeah, let's go ahead with that. Like ever. I was like, really? I think it was like convert a site to WordPress, something that probably takes someone, I don't know not even a day, a few hours. Mm -hmm. And I think he gave me a quote of like 15 grand. No lie. (sighs) No lie. He gave me like a quote of 15 grand. And he said, yeah, it's going to take 21 days. We're going to do this, 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 this. 21? Yeah, he said, this is what someone said. And then in my head, I was like, get so what? annoyed in my head i was thinking what if somebody actually he gets somebody gets that through and says yeah that sounds good yeah i'm gonna go ahead with that and for me i'm thinking wow this person feels totally cool to like charge 15 grand to do this and then i think in the, he, he might be getting loads of sales and he might just be killing it and then you think wow it works for him so maybe you think uh-huh. do you know what i do that maybe i can start hanging around with this person who's charging these prices and getting paid that amount which to us might seem ridiculous but he probably makes sales yeah. At that price. We know I have an issue with, <laughs> with people charging so much for WordPress stuff. <laughs> but, but, that, but, but if it works, but if him, it works and he finds yeah, a client, obviously he probably has maybe a hundred people that say no and maybe he gets three or four clients a year that say he's, yes. love, he's loving yeah, life. Yeah, no, that's true. So that's true. he's obviously doing something that's working for him. So if it works for him and you want to do the same thing as that person, I would get around and say, how, what is what are the numbers on this? How do you charge that without? How do you justify that? How do you show how do you this? sleep at night? <laughs> how do you sleep at night? <laughs> you eat with that, Jake. But it maybe it works for him. So uh-huh. it's getting around people who kind of like smash your reality of where you're currently at and say, you know what, this is how I've been living for the last few years. I'm earning X amount doing this and I'm living this kind of lifestyle. And yeah, it's kind of just getting around those people. And mm-hmm. I think that's happened to me in the last few years being out of work you just start growing with the people around you and so each time you there's been people I thought when I left my job I was like oh my god you're amazing for what you do Mm -hmm. and then sometimes you level up and you kind of like you look back at them and say oh they really didn't have much in control because now I've learned more yeah and then you keep going you keep like finding new people who kind of challenge you and as I say smash your reality and Mm -hmm. that's what it's all about really get around where it gets better and that's usually where you want to be and they've already done it so they're going to tell you really fast I know Ty Lopez always talks about that Mm -hmm. so that's what yeah. I meant by that anyway. Cool. Is there anything else or are we kind of running to the end? Well, I kind of feel like we're running to the end. There is so much stuff that I think we could touch on. Mm-hmm. But, but you know what? I'm sure it will come up in another episode in the near future. I think as, a, as a very sort of basic kind of energizing yourself, motivating yourself. I think there's a few good nuggets. things in there. There's a few nuggets And I think there. I'd rather de- take a deep dive on things like gamification a little bit more rather than just try and touch on a shit yeah. ton of stuff. So I think we'll leave it there. Yes. We'll, we, we'll probably come back to this in a... Can't believe how quick episode. it went. I know, like flow by, flu, flu, flu by. Flew by. Flew by. Cool. Okay, so we're going to wrap up. Um, all of the notes, anything that we've mentioned, is going to be at powerfulnonsense.com forward slash 121. So all the links to the resources will be there. Hit us up there. Um, also, if you are listening on YouTube... List, watching, watching on YouTube. And listening. You will be listening, listening to you. Yeah. Yeah, just have us on mute, just like watching us, lip reading. Um, if you're watching on YouTube, please hit that subscribe button and the thumbs up. Uh, leave a comment as well, let us know what you think. And if you're on iTunes, subscribe if you haven't already. And Big we, thanks to all our listeners out there. Yeah, it's building a nice big audience at the moment. So thanks for everyone that's sticking with us. Um, and please share, 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 share. And actually, leave us a review as well if you haven't already. Mm-hmm. Five stars or more would be wonderful because it really helps to get the show out there. So thanks very much, guys, and we'll catch you next time. See you later.